What's up, everybody? NEXT here, coming to you today from the Giza Plateau. We're just gonna head over to the Osiris Shaft. That's the Osiris Shaft right over there. So we're coming up just behind the entrance to the Osiris Shaft. And I'm really excited about this because one, it is deeply mysterious and rarely visited. And we'll be visiting this on my next tour of Egypt, which is a VIP special permissions pass, includes a special permissions pass to go inside the Osiris Shaft. Unfortunately, you guys can see here the Osiris shaft has become the Osiris dumpster of plastic, which is really unfortunate. Major problem here in Egypt. And eventually, hopefully, the authorities will make a move to start cleaning this stuff up. Who knows? Maybe we can even put together some sort of effort online together. Maybe do some sort of crowdfunding campaign and get a bunch of people to come here and clean up this trash from the sacred space, which is certainly a problem. But not to digress or pull the conversation away from the Osiris shaft itself, I'm gonna take you around to the front. It's locked up, so you're not able to enter. It's not available to the general tourist, but I'm excited because my next tour of Egypt, which will be taking place in just two weeks, we will have the special permissions permit to visit the Osiris shaft. There is, so just to orient you, this is the Pyramid of Khufu, Khafra, Menkara, or Menkare. We're on the causeway, Khafra or Khafre causeway, which is just behind the Sphinx. You can see the back of the head of the Sphinx there. We're now standing above, and I'm just gonna bring you around over here so you can get a better view. So you'll see that it's locked up, but we'll be opening this lock and treating the members of my forthcoming tour. Hopefully they clean this area up a bit. And so you have this top level, then there's another level, and then you go down to the, the middle level where you have all the separate niches and there's two stone boxes or sarcophagus that are still in situ. Interestingly enough, when Salam, uh, Salim Hassan, one of the early archeologists, Egyptian archeologists, really good one, he noted in his documentation about how there were actually six boxes. So I don't know what happened to the others or if that was just hypothetical, but there's two remaining and one is deeply mysterious. The work of uh, Robert Temple suggests, he worked with a geologist and they suggest that the box is made of diocite and diocite, I may be mispronouncing that slightly, Di diocite, which is not a stone that is commonly found in Egypt. You don't really find quarries, that diocite, diocite quarries in Egypt. It would be outside the country. And so it is possible that the box was exported um, a little hard to believe they would have dragged it from, you know, so far away, but it is possible. The signature of the box, the style of the box, you know, a lot of people want to say that it's pre-dynastic and the ancient Egyptians couldn't possibly have carved it because the tools aren't in the archaeological record. I don't really subscribe to that train of thought so much. Uh, I'm more of a proponent of the high wisdom and sacred science of the ancient Egyptians and believe that they had more than the ability to um, have that sort of level of craftsmanship or, or workmanship. In fact, it looks like a, not only, it's not even that it looks like a very old box, but it appears to be a late Syed period box. Yeah, so... The box has 
characteristics of what we would see in the later site period. And so did they bring it in at a later period? You know, I believe Robert Temple's theory is that the second part of the shaft is attributed to, you know, it's much, he believes it's much older. And so, and then, and then the third part of the shaft would have been carved during the Middle Kingdom, which is the time that Osiris came into vogue. Yeah, so the box has the characteristics of the Sayat period, very late period in Egypt. And so it's possible that it was brought in later, you know, similar to the precision boxes that we see at Elephantine Island, which are not exactly 100% precise when you measure them, but, you know, a similar craftsmanship in a sense. And so it's possible that somebody brought it in in a later period. Robert Temple's theory is that the second part, the second level of the Osiris shaft is much older. And he believes that the third and final level is attributed to probably somewhere in the Middle Kingdom when Osiris came, also came more into vogue um not sure i entirely subscribe to that and can't really say with certainty when the box was placed there it does present a bit of a mystery how did they get it down it's not like it's entirely impossible it's quite possible they could have used sand the same sort of idea of like sand hydraulics the same way that they lift obelisks or the same way it is believed probably one of the better theories on how the obelisks were raised they would sort of build a mastaba structure, fill it up with sand, pull the obelisk up on a ramp, you know, and using rope, they would then they would clear the sand away and allow the obelisk to, you know, gently be placed into on top of its plinth and whatnot. Although, you know, there's still the question of how did they get the sand out from the bottom. So I don't wholeheartedly subscribe to that either. I don't really have a conclusive theory on that. But I would assume that you could do something very similar for the Osiris shaft because it has been widened over time, but I think it's always been wide enough that you could have got the box in the long way from side to side by dropping it down through the Osiris shaft with, with the sand. But then the question is, where did, how did they remove all the sand? Where did it go? There is uh, another mystery with respect to the Osiris shaft and that is the bottom level there is a cavity an opening and it was accounts from antiquity that say you know there was a whole passage here which remains to be seen although it hasn't been fully excavated so there could be more to that don't know with certainty anyway here's a sphinx this is next just wanted to show you this quick video we're not going inside yet but i will have full documentation inside the osiris shaft in two weeks when we come back for my tour. If you want to learn how to join my tours, you can visit adeptexpeditions.com. We still have spaces left for the October tour, where we will also have special permission visits. Something really interesting going on here at the Sphinx. I don't know what that is. They have that white coating. It almost looks like a paint. I don't know what that's all about. Probably some effort to preserve it. Painting the Sphinx white. Here's another view here. And they're whitewashing the Sphinx. Sounds like Egyptology. All right, everybody, this is NEXT. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Give it a like, share with your friends. I have a lot of interesting content coming real soon.